All right, I'd like to call this February 20th, 2014, Cookville City Council meeting to order. Could we get a roll call, please? Councilman Anderson? Present. Councilman Woodford? Present. Mayor Swallow? Here. Vice Mayor Epps? Here. Councilman Albright? Here. All present. Thank you. Would everyone please stand for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance? of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. All right. Item 1, consider approval of agenda as presented. Are there any changes to the agenda? No changes. Motion for approval. So moved. Second. All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. All right, consider approval of minutes of the council meeting held on February the 6th. Motion for approval. So moved. Second. Vote. Five yes votes. Motion carried. All right, on to new business. Consider resolution 140205, setting a date March 20th, 2014, for a public hearing on resolution 140206, calling for the annexation of certain territory and a referendum to determine whether the territory should be annexed to the city of Cookville. Scheduling a public hearing March 20th, 2014 concerning a plan of services to be provided to said ter territory and to give notice of, sa of the same. Sponsors, Mr. James Mills. Mayor and council members, the city has received petitions from the owners of three parcels for annexation of their properties. These properties are located off of Old Stewart, Bennett, Minelet Creek, and Bob Gentry Roads, and the area is depicted on the map. For identification purposes, the territory has been designated as the Old Stewart Road area. The area consists of three parcels in its entirety. In their entirety, um, parcel 66, 67, and 74 on map 64 of the Putnam County tax maps. Parcel 66, which is the larger tract there, was recently uh, combined with three other parcels, parcel 6602, 6702, and 68 on the same tax map to form its current configuration. <coughs> Since a portion of this uh, area is outside the urban growth boundary, a referendum must be held to facilitate annexation. To hold a referendum on annexation, the council is required to adopt a resolution calling for the annexation referendum and adopting a plan of services for the territory. Um, the resolution before the council tonight sets a date for the public hearing for the consideration of the resolution calling for the referendum and adopting the plan of services. The date for the public hearing would be March 20th, 2014. Uh, the planning department recommends for the adoption of resolution R140205. Thank you, Mr. Mills. A motion for approval. So moved. Second. Questions, comments? No. All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. Me. Thank you, Mr. Mills. <coughs> uh, item four consider resolution 140207, entering into a contract with TDOT for a proposed industrial access highway. Sponsors, City Manager Jim Shipper. Mayor and Council, this resolution authorizes the city to apply for industrial uh, access road grants. Uh, those grants with uh, money will use to enhance the roads uh, near the new interchange and the Highlands Business Park. Uh, it's uh, fit, basically a 50% uh, match for uh, any movement of utilities and and right-of-way acquisition and TDOT will pay 100% of the construction cost. And I would recommend approval. Thank you, Mr. Shipley. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Questions, comments? Seeing none, I'll vote. Obvious votes, motion carries. Mm -hmm. Item five, consider awarding bid for sanitary sewer and water replacement project. Sponsor from the Water Quality Control Department, Mr. Ronnie Kelly. Mayor and Council, we recently opened bids on a sanitary sewer and water line replacement project and received four bidders. Uh, the boat low bidder, Elk Mountain Construction, $544,730 and one cents was a low bidder, a low bidder meeting specs. Uh, this project 
going to consist of different areas around the city of Cookville, and they're sort of highlighted there in those boxes to give you an idea of, of where, where we're doing, going to be doing some work. I'm going to zoom in on a couple of them just to give you an idea of what we're – this is one of the, I think, the top box, DeBerry Heights lift station, uh, sewer shed that we're going to be doing. And these yellow dots just highlights what we're going to be doing there to fix some problems there in that area. Uh, there's another section over on South Jefferson line that a line needs to be repaired and we're going to replace the water line while we're in there. That sort of gives you an idea of some of the areas, but they're going to be spread out around Cookville. And we'd recommend your approval. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Uh, do I have a motion for approval? I move. Second. Questions, comments? Seeing none, I'll vote. <coughs> Five yes votes, motion carries. Item six, consider approval of additional footage to the Sanitary Sewer and Water Replacement Project. Sponsors, Mr. Ronnie Kelly. Mayor and Council, while we had that project out to bid, we had a sectional line over here. It's located at the intersection of Buffalo Valley Road and uh, Willow Avenue. We had a call from one of the businesses there, and we went over and investigated and looked at it and realized that that really needs immediate attention. And it's sort of beyond our scope to do that kind of work. So what we're asking is to uh, fold that into this project that was just bid. We have uh, requested the contractor if they would be willing to do that pro do that additional footage using their uh, same unit prices, and they are, they're willing to do that. Uh, the only thing we don't have that we bid was traffic control. The other day when I talked to you, we were talking about doing it during the week. Since that time, we've our engineers met with uh, State Highway Department, TDOT. They said that they uh, can't make us do it on a weekend, but they would highly recommend we do it on a weekend. <laughs> and after our people are out there, they highly recommended to me that we do it on a, have it done on a weekend. And I came through there today, and traffic was backed up from Spring Street past Broad Street, as far as you could see going to the north. So we talked to the contractor. He said he would do it on a weekend, but he needed to add an additional $1,000 on the traffic control because it was going to be on a Saturday. We think that's uh, a good thing to do. So it, that would be our recommendations to add this into that project. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Uh, do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Questions, comments? No. Good move. Yeah. yeah. I think it's Sounds like $1,000 is a nice price to pay to keep. Yes, we think it's reasonable in the weekend, and it's just, you know, you, everybody's been there. You know what kind of, it's going to be a mess, right. even on a weekend. Okay. I'll vote. Thank Five you. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Item 7. Consider awarding bid for uniforms for the electric park. Electric department sponsors Mr. Tony Peake. Mayor and Council, uh, we've opened bids, <coughs> excuse me, on three, uh, Clothing items uh, that are required to be flame retardant, work shirts, work pants, and work jackets. Item one and items two, I'd recommend perfect fit as the low bid meeting specs, and item three, unifirst as the low bid meeting specs. I'd recommend your approval. Thank you, Mr. Peake. Do I have a motion for approval? Motion for approval. So moved. Second. Questions, Just, Perfect fit. Have you done business with them? Pardon? Perfect fit. I'm not. Yes, we have done business before okay. with okay. them. Okay. They and uh, Unifirst gen generally split whatever oh, okay. flame retardant stuff we bid. Okay. Look else? nice. Pardon? They look nice. I haven't seen them yet. <laughs> <laughs> they have looked nice in the past. <laughs> I, like a, I mean, I'd like a nice jacket too, so. I just want them to work. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anything else? <laughs> Under <armor>. arms. <laughs> All vote. Thank you. Five years Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Everyone get comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> We're out of eight. If you need to go to the concession stand, feel free to do so. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry back. Uh, yeah, Receive the city's financials from July 1, 13 through. 1231.13, sponsors Mr. Mike Davidson. Yes, Mayor and Council, I'd hate for anyone to miss this, so I hope they hurry back to their seat. Uh, I would like to just give you a quick summary of the first six months of the fiscal year, bring you up to date on how we're doing. 
uh, just overall, everything is pretty much in line with budget. There's a couple of surprises. I'll point those out to you in the different funds. But nothing, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing too crazy. But starting with the general fund, uh, year to date through December 31st, we realized $11,171,000 in revenue. It's roughly 40, right at 48% of our budget for the year in revenue. Uh, property tax not due till the end of February, so we'll see the property tax. It's at 41.86% through December, so we'll see that number uh, increase, and we'll collect roughly, typically throughout the year, we get about 95% of what we budgeted. The rest of that is delinquent taxes, and we collect that in the years later. Uh, <clears throat> but everything else is pretty much in line. Local option sales tax is in line with uh, what we budgeted, two and a quarter percent increase for the year, and we're right in line with that. So that's, uh, that's good. Wholesale beer tax is up a little bit. We've actually collected 56% of what we budgeted. And wholesale liquor tax is 60% of budget. So that, that revenue line item is up as well. But again, total revenue, 11171 On the expenditure side, year to date on operating expenditures, we spent 10870000 It's roughly 47% of what we had budgeted in operating expenditures. Again, there's no real surprises there uh, we do have a few work comp claims that's kind of jumped up in uh, one of our departments and that's <clears throat> public works I'll just point that out since that's the 51 percent number I hate to point that out but <laughs> it is that's the 51 percent of the operating budget that you see there and we'll give you what, a new building and you have a big work comp claim <laughs> and that's kind of what's jumped that number up above 50 percent but again, ten million eight seventy in operating expenditures, a total of forty seven percent of the operating budget for the general fund. In capital expenditures, we spent two hundred thirty eight thousand so far. Sixty three percent of our capital budget, those one time purchases. Uh, the majority of that is patrol cars in the police department, is what that is. Uh, we have made the $64,220 transfer to our animal control fund as well as the $3,000 transfer to our tree board fund out of the general fund. So total expenditures to date through December 13 or December of 2013, $11,175,738. I'm just going to move right on to the next fund. Stop me at any time if you have any questions. State Street Aid Fund, which is primarily where we handle paving and street improvements. Uh, collected $466,459 in revenue. Uh, <clears throat> big part of the revenue we have, you see that at 17% total of the budget. Uh, taxes, we allocate some property tax to their, to their State Street Aid Fund. It's just a small piece from a couple of years ago when we'd allocated a few cents on the tax dollar for some paving. That's still coming in. Uh, we have the Surface Transportation Program, which is one of the big uh, grant pro uh, programs we have right now, and we're going to do some major paving throughout the city, and that's going to uh, occur in the springtime now, and the revenue will be coming in to offset those uh, that uh, expenditures for the paving. But 466, 459 in revenue today, we spent in operating expenditures 257, 935 and 43,422 in capital expenditures, which is part of our surface transportation, the paving project that we've got going on. So a total of 301,357 in expenditures for State Street Aid. Our solid waste fund has uh, <clears throat> realized 735,532 in revenue, a little over 51% of our projected revenue. Uh, we Spent six hundred seventy thousand five fifty, which is uh, almost fifty four percent of the, of the budget in our solid waste fund. That's up as well a little bit because of a work comp claim. And those are the two surprises that I've had. Is this, those two work comp claims? Uh, <clears throat> we've spent fifty thousand in I'm trying to think what the fifty is in other operating expenditures and I can't think of what that is off the top of my head, so I have to look that one up for you. Says so vehicle repairs at eighty one percent of the budget. We have had some Extra. sanitation vehicles that we've had to have some significant repairs okay. to those. Uh, capital expenditures, those are some dumpsters and roll offs that we purchased. So total expenditures in sanitation fund seven fifty five two fifty three. Next fund is the drug fund, uh, realized $9,313 in revenue, basically confiscated revenue uh, proceeds. And we spent $14,504 out of that fund. Majority of that is for uh, keeping those vehicles that they have seized, storing those vehicles and expenditures related to storing those vehicles. 
the Animal Control Fund. We have $105,077 in revenue. And the 65,100 of that is from Putnam County that they allocate to the animal shelter. Uh, Monterey has contributed 3,000. Allgood and Baxter, we just received their contributions this past week. So that'll be reported to you, their next update. Uh, 23,546 in fees for charges and services. Those are adoption fees when, from people adopting animals. And 13,000 in fundraising and donations. Uh, the city has contributed $64,220 to the Animal Control Fund, and we have other revenue that we've reserved for the new animal shelter that is being constructed presently. Part of that's coming out of these reserve proceeds as well as the bond issue that was approved by council, and, and we received those funds back in December. Total expenditures to date for the Animal Control Fund is $186,124 which is 25% of the total budget. So their expenditures are really good right now. And they're, they're doing a good job <clears throat> trying to control and, maintain and watch their operating budget. Economic Development Fund. We've received 129411 in revenue, primarily property taxes, what goes into the Economic Development Fund. We have spent 743388 the majority of that is for the improvements at the Highlands Business Park that's coming out of the fund balance of the Economic Development Fund. That fund balance has been generated basically the big the big portion of that from bond proceeds that we had issued back in 2010 to construct the business park along with what the county had contributed as well. Quality of Life Fund <clears throat> has uh, $61,287 in revenue. That Primarily is property tax, but we also have a grant in that fund. The Rails with Trails projects being funded through the Quality of Life Fund. Any expenditures there that are reimbursed by the grant, that's the other governmental rev or intergovernmental revenue you see there at 29000 But total revenue to date, 61287 and we spent 40183 through December. And that's, uh, again, 40150 of that total is for the Rails with Trails project. Our general obligation debt service funds where we meet our debt payments on all of our uh, notes and lo loans and bond uh, payments that we have. <clears throat> that fund is primarily receives revenue from property taxes in lieu of tax payments from CRMC as well as a state sales tax that goes into this fund. We have 1,686,302 in revenue to date which is almost 51% of the budgeted revenue. And we've spent 492,634 to date. Uh, the majority of the of the payments on our bonds, the principal payments occur in May, and that's why you see zero on that line item for principal payments on bonds. Those are paid typically in May. We have a few that are paid in June as well. As well, interest on our variable rate debt continues to be less than one percent. That's why you see on total interest on loans and notes notes and loan agreements 42,000 and we budgeted 450 the budget's based off of 5% interest rate but the rate right now is at less than 1% so any additional funds that we <coughs> don't spend goes back into that fund balance which helps build our debt capacity going forward make sure you keep that number down <laughs> we're trying that interest rate we're trying <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> moving over to the utilities, Water Quality Control Fund has received $6,986,000 in revenue, which is right at 50% of their total revenue budget. Total expenditures, operating expenditures, $5,435,000. It's right at 48% of their operating budget. Uh, capital, $1,438,724 in capital. They've made some debt payments as well. And total expenditures for the water control fund is seven million four thirty one thirty five. So everything's right in right online, right in track with that budget. The electric department is twenty six million four sixty in revenue. It's about forty seven percent of their budget. Revenue might be down just a little bit. I talked to with Mr. Peak about that. And I think he's seeing that all the valley uh Utilities are seeing that the revenue's down a little bit, possibly from the weather back in the summer when it was a lot cooler. 
this past summer. Uh, I'm not sure about TVA rates. Maybe if they're lower or not, I'm not sure, Tony. Yeah, they're about the same. I uh, hate to wish anybody any bad luck, but we're anticipating hopefully a windfall. <laughs> <laughs> After this winter, <laughs> things will probably turn around. Uh, total expenditures for the electric department, 28140387 which is about 47% of their total budget. The gas department has total revenue through December of 3718 33% of their total budget. There's, that's typical. The gas department doesn't really turn around until March when we start billing for January and February gas usage. So that's when their financial, the revenue turns around on their side. They're also anticipating <laughs> a windfall, too. <laughs> <laughs> we did sell more gas in January than we have ever, ever sold. Ever. Um, so again, total revenue three million seven eighteen or three million seven three million seven hundred eighteen thousand. Uh, total expenditures for the gas department operating expenditures four million five eighty one, which is uh, right at forty four percent of their total operating budget. And capital expenditures three hundred eighty four thousand. That's primarily the improvements that were made on Fisk Road to replace that gas line we did late last summer. Uh, total expenditures for the gas department, 5403 which is roughly 46% of their budget. <coughs> Last fund I think that I have for you is the employee insurance fund. Uh, as you recall, we've been watching that fund very closely for quite a while now. Uh, we did implement the new premiums. Those went into effect in January. Uh, total revenue through December 31st. 1,709,000 and total expenditures through December 31st, 2,137,000. So we're $400,000 behind at that point. We projected possibly if without premium, increasing the premiums, we could take as much as $800,000 out of this fund. Uh, the claims haven't slowed down a whole lot. They have backed off a little bit. I think a lot of that's because of January 1 and the deductibles reset. Uh, but again, we're going to keep an eye on it try to make sure that fund balance stays healthy so that we can pay claims and any big surprises in claims going forward. It looks like I mean, you're still right at budget amount. Mm -hmm. right. On revenue, if you look at the revenue side, we are right at budget, and that's because at the beginning of the fiscal year when we, when we presented the budget, we, we, we thought we knew what the expenses would be, and that's right in line with so far what we, we had projected. The revenue, we hadn't... We hadn't approved the premium increase at that time. So this revenue is still based off the old premiums. That's why it's still right in line with the budget. Okay. Uh, and without the premium possibility of the premium increase, we were going to eat into the fund balance $800,000 or even more. If Because uh, right now, based on the expenditures, without the premium increase, we would eat into that fund balance $800,000. So we budgeted this without the premium increase in place when we first passed the budget. What about the administrative charges? The administrative charges? Other charges. Those. Do we, do we get hit at the start of the year with something? Uh, no, those. That $89,000 budget is the effect of the Affordable Care Act. And the fee that we'll have to pay for when the covered lives that? that we have now. I mean, it's a new fee. Uh, I think it goes in. It has to be paid more toward the end of the year, I think. Okay, okay yeah. that's fine. I remember. I remember that. So, and we project that to be about seventy to eighty thousand dollars for that. So that's what that line item is. And that's all I have. If you have any more questions, I'll try to try to answer it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davidson. There are several spots in the budget where we, as you see, we get money from the county or we give money to the county. And uh, so I just want to thank the county for being good partners. We think we work well together. So uh, this is the portion of the meeting. We'll open the floor if anybody wants to come forward. Uh, hearing of citizens and or delegations, we just ask you to keep it to three minutes. Council, anybody? Council? I know. The race coming up. Cummings Mills, Cummings Falls. Cummings Falls marathon and half marathon. Ten K and five K. 
Okay. Saturday, right? Every, every, anything, any, anything you want. Any kind of run you want. <laughs> Show up and you'll be there. It's too late to have it for you. Anybody else? All right. This meeting is adjourned.